Radio programs were once the way to get families to come together for entertainment. It was the perfect time for gun smoke, once known as gun law. The program became a TV show in 1952. Keep watching to learn about the best gun smoke bloopers and hidden facts. Unforgettable cast and guest stars Polly Pond was the first choice for the part of Miss Kitty Russell. She turned it down and Amanda Blake eagerly picked up the chance. Marshal Matt Dillon was the most difficult role to cast. William Conrad voiced him on the radio show, but he wasn't considered. Scheduling conflicts prevented the network from achieving its dream of nabbing John Wayne. The icon suggested they give it to his friend James Arness after they'd auditioned 26 other actors. Ken Curtis was able to play several characters. His primary role was Festus Hagen. He also showed up as Buck Taylor, Newly O'Brien, a Texan cowboy murdered after becoming friends with Chester, and other roles. James Arness was the only actor to star in every episode in Gunsmoke. That was despite struggling through the final 10 seasons due to severe arthritis. He'd have to film an episode in a single day to take a week-long break afterward. Milburn Stone almost starred in every episode as well. He missed out on six episodes in 1971 due to a heart attack. The cast was carefully chosen, and so were their names. Chester's last name was good on the radio program, but it was switched to Proudfoot in the TV show as a nod to one of J.R.R. Tolkien's hobbits from The Lord of the Rings. Doc Adams had no first name for 16 seasons until his actor got the chance to pick one and thought Galen had a nice ring to it. The town of Dodge also saw visits from several A-list stars, often from the same show. They saw Captain Kirk, Scotty, Spock, and Bones from Star Trek. Peter, Cindy, and Jan Brady came by. Other notable guest stars included John Astin from The Addams Family, John Voight, and Ron Howard. The Opening Scene The original opening of Gunsmoke shows Marshal Matt Dillon in a gunfight. He then walks through a graveyard and gets up to Boot Hill while delivering memorable narration. The speech was lifted directly from the radio show. The producers wanted to create a strong connection between the two and make sure listeners who recognized and loved the narration would want to sit down and watch. The opening sequence was changed in the 70s due to a push to tone down violence in the media. The original gunfight remains iconic and was filmed on the same main street as the western staple, 1952's High Noon. Success on the Radio and TV Gunsmoke hit TVs in 1952, with its radio program running at the same time. It was the most watched show on American television from 1957 to 61, and had aired over 400 episodes by the time it ended. That record remained untouched until the classic animated show The Simpsons aired its 689th episode on April 29, 2018. Gunsmoke was so popular, it led to the cancellation of other shows. Ratings started to dip in season 6, so they were considering pulling the plug. But instead, they moved it to a different time slot that had been previously occupied by Gilligan's Island. Gunsmoke also spawned a classic catchphrase. Marshal Dillon would tell every villain who entered his town to, quote, get the hell out of Dodge. The phrase was a popular part of contemporary speech in the 60s and 70s. A few fun facts. Gunsmoke had a sponsor fit for a cowboy, L&M Cigarettes. They kept this relationship for the first seven seasons until cigarette ads were banned on TV. The Gunsmoke radio program made it clear Miss Kitty was the madam of the local saloon. The TV show didn't change this fact but was a little more subtle about it because they wanted to make the show more family-friendly. They toned it down even more in the 70s when the intro was changed. Violence and sex were both being pushed out. Olivia Walton, who played Miss Matt Dillon, only got to have one tiny on-screen kiss in the entirety of the show. It was during the episode Matt's Love Story. Actors on the show also came up with some of their characters' most distinguishing features. Dennis Weaver wanted to differentiate Chester from everyone else in Dodge and decided to fake a limp. It later became a central part of the character. Characters died in the dangerous town of Dodge, but Gary Busey's character was the last one. Harvey Daly was written out by dying of brain cancer in one of the final episodes. Timeline Troubles Gunsmoke is set in the 1870s and 80s, but expresses social, racial, and political ideals more common in the 50s through 70s when it was filmed and aired. The gun-toting characters have a low-hanging belt holster rig for quick draws. This was known as the Buscadero style. This wasn't invented until the early 20th century. It wouldn't have shown up in Hollywood or on real Texas Rangers. They would have worn their holsters directly on their belts, but only a few Gunsmoke characters do. 
Matt is referred to as a U.S. Marshal. Kansas became a state in 1861, 10 years before the series is set. It only had one U.S. District Marshal, one Marshal, and a few Deputy Marshals. Those deputies would be in Hayes, the capital of Kansas at the time. They could enforce federal law, but wouldn't have jurisdiction in a small town like Dodge. It would only have had a town marshal and county sheriff. Guest characters come into Dodge in stagecoaches. All stagecoach lines serving the town were closed in 1872 when the Santa Fe Railroad arrived. No one would have still been using them by the time the show was set. Continuity Conundrums the doors of the Long Branch Saloon were a point of contention for some time. It had swinging doors when it was open and two solid doors that close and lock with a key at the end of the day. The issue was that the solid doors couldn't be found during the day and the swinging doors couldn't be found at night. This was changed in later episodes to make the solid doors visible and open flush against the wall. The signs on Ma Smalley's boarding house also couldn't seem to stay in one place. Depending on the episode, it may be on the porch railing, the wall of the house, or on the roof. This goof was never fixed, but it was probably only noticed by devoted, eagle-eyed Gunsmoke fans. How it ended One of the strangest parts of Gunsmoke was how it ended. Essentially, it didn't. The 20th season featured an episode like any other. To everyone's surprise, it was the finale. There was no closure for the fans or the cast. There were at least a few follow-up films. They included Gunsmoke Return to Dodge, The Last Apache, To the Last Man, The Long Ride, and One Man's Justice. James Arness had shown up for every episode of the show and continued his devotion by appearing as the marshal for each movie. The impact of Gunsmoke on popular culture is unmistakable. Along with the life and legend of Wyatt Earp, it spawned a decades-long Western renaissance. By the 1950s, there were over 40 Westerns in primetime slots. Where's the cast now? James Arness became a worldwide legend as both the Dodge City Marshal and Zeb in the European cult classic How the West Was Won. He died of natural causes June 3, 2011 at age 88. Dennis Weaver went on to other projects after nine years on Gunsmoke. He was the leading man in Kentucky Jones and appeared in the film Duel and the show McCloud from 1970 to 77. He died at age 81 on February 24, 2006. Amanda Blake's character, Miss Kitty, was inducted into the National Cowboy and Western Heritage Museum's Hall of Great Western Performers. She retired early and became the first to raise cheetahs in captivity. She died of liver failure at age 60, August 16, 1989. Milburn Stone came from a family of artists. His cousin Madge Blake appeared in almost 100 episodes of Adam West's Batman, and his brother Joe wrote two episodes of Gunsmoke. Although he never appeared in the reunion films, he fought to get the show's royalties before retiring in 1975. He died at age 70, June 12, 1980. Ken Curtis's character, Festus Hagen, replaced Chester Good and brought plenty of comic relief. He bonded with James Arness and held the title of deputy for 11 years. He continued with westerns after the show, including The Yellow Rose in 1983. He died at age 74 on April 28, 1991. There's even a statue of him in Clovis, California. Now it's time to hear from you. What's your favorite classic Western TV show? Let us know in the comments section below.